Hi, today I want to talk about the ESP32 and the previously builded Ruver adapter and how to solder the adapter or at least how I solder the adapter in my lab. And you can find all the tools that I'm using in the description. First, I'm using a breadboard and the pin headers to align the small PCB board on the breadboard so everything stays in place while I'm sorting the adapter. Next, I use a flux pen, but this pen is usually used for liquid flux, but I use the MTEC semi-liquid flux to apply to the pads on the breadboard. So everything is heavily fluxed before I use any solder. Beside the soldering iron for the solder, I use this 0.5 mm fine solder for electronic parts. So this is what I'm usually using and hopefully this spool reads forever because I don't think I can buy this type of solder anymore. And I don't know how I can get because this is one of the best solder I ever used, especially for hand soldering. So first to fix the adapter on the pin header lines, I just solder four corners of the pin headers so everything stays in place while I do the rest of the ESP32 adapter. Next I align the ESP32 Ruver module on the PCB and this is a very important step. So this one decide if you all the module fits on the small PCB adapter or not. So you have to be very careful and start just by solving following one point on the corner of the ESP32 Ruver module. And this can, so in my case, I just realign this and just solder this two or three times. So before I continue with the other pads. So this is, as I said, very important to align the module. And then I just begin by the opposite corner to solder every small pads to the adapter. But one thing you have to be keep in mind, the ground plane needs a little bit more heat. So I crank up my soldering iron just to about to 360 degrees Celsius or more if needed, because usually I use round about 330 degrees Celsius for soldering, but this depends totally on your soldering station. So let's continue with the next pad and so on. And so we go round and round. Every small pad needs to be soldered to the adapter. And I solder the small pads like I heat the pad with the soldering iron or the tip of the soldering iron. And then I apply a little bit of the small fine solder to the heated pad. And then you see the flowing of the solder do the rest. And also the flux do the trick. So the fl solder flows to every connected metal that was heated by the tip of the soldering iron. And another technique could be you apply a little bit of solder to the tip of the iron and then and then you apply the tinnit tip of the solder iron to the pad and so everything was soldered perfect in seconds. And this is a voiceover, as you might think, because usually I work in totally silence and I really enjoy working just without talking. So this is what we do on the one side of the module and you guess it, the other side we just turn around the ESP32 and just continue with the other side. And here we are facing the same problem with the ground plane. The ground plane just sucks up all the heat from the tip of the soldering iron. So we have to crank up all the heat from our soldering station and then try again. Because we need to heat up the pad so all the solder can flow just and we don't 
produce a so-called cold solder join. And frequently I clean the tip of my solder iron, so I use this kind of metal sponge or brass or copper sponge to just clean up the tip of the iron. And I find this a better solution as I in the past I use also a sponge with water, but I think the brass or copper sponges are a little bit better solution and you don't have to mess with water on your bench and this is instantly usable and need no preparation and this is one tip I usually forget myself just use enough flux so there's not enough flux just apply just a double of the amount you think you need and then we just continue with all the other pins so this is a little bit boring just one pin after the another and if you bridge some pins, the best advice I can give, don't panic. This is no problem because all we need is a small solder wick and we get rid of the excessive solder. And you can also use the cheapest solder wick you can buy and just flux them by yourself. Because I just use enough flux also on the solder wick. So everything is just flowed to liquid and just sucked into the solder wick and we get rid of the bridge. And then we just continue until all the pads are soldered and we are happy with the result. And one of my important steps are also the inspection. So just look at every pad that everything is really soldered and no excessive solda is bridging the other pads or there's enough solda so all the pads are really connected with the module from the ESP32. And if we are happy with the result or if we need some rework then we do it but if we are happy then we can continue with the next steps. And my next step is soldering the pin headers. So this is also a little bit a repetitive work. Just solder one header pin and then the other. So just continue after all pins are soldered and also you are just a little bit proud of your work. And now we also need to populate the switches or push buttons for flashing and resetting the ESP32 and I use a big bundle of push buttons for SMD soldering and use my tweezers to apply the push buttons to the right place. But before I do this I use one of the pad and apply a little bit solder to the pad so I just only need to use the tweezers and get the device to the right place and then I can reflow the applied solder and keep the SMD device fixed to the place I want. And then I can also solder the other pad of the SMD device or in this case the push button. And I do the same with the other push button and then we can continue with the other needed SMD device. And in my case, this is a resistor, an SMD resistor, 10K ohms. And I use the footprint 0603 and I buy this normally in reels of maybe 10,000 pieces. So every piece of SMD resistor is just around a portion of a cent. And here also a little bit a small accident. I apply a little bit solder to the heat can of the ESP32 module, but don't panic. Just apply a little bit of flux to the solder and then use the solder wick to get rid of the small accident. And my last step before I just use the module, I use acetone to clean up all the flux. But you can also use 
my maybe isopropanol alcohol to clean it but i'm a little bit cheap and i'm just using acetone and for my purpose this is okay and for cleaning i also use some q-tips just stolen from my wife out of the bathroom so that's all for today and hopefully you find this useful or enjoy the video and maybe learn something and if you have some comments please write it down below and you also can use the thumbs up button if you like the video i wish you a nice day see you next time and bye bye